Top of the morning to you, or afternoon or evening, whenever you may be watching. My name is Scott, I represent the SLN Game Slam, here with the one and only Sergio to bring you the next episode of the Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke. And I'm fired up today because we have finally found where we needed to go. Uh, little Apple Maps controversy last time, a little bit in the wrong direction. But if you look at the sign, we have arrived at our destination. And of course, today's quest is we would like the TM of Thunder for our boy. And I totally just jumped in without doing a team recap because I said I'm fired up. But let's do one now. Starting out with Cornus Boy, the Nido Queen. Body Slam, Horn Drill, Earthquake, Poison Sting. We will uh, forget Poison Sting at some point, definitely before the E4, uh, but Fissure would have been kind of funny to have two one-hit KO moves. Next up, we have Joe Benny, the Snorlax 100 Attack, Body Slam, Amnesia, Rest, and Strength, followed by Austin, the level 43 Charizard, 111 Special, Holy Shnikes, Swords Dance, Slash, Ember, and Cut. And yes, we are four levels away from him learning Flamethrower, which is why we've not taught him Fire Blast. Next up, we have the Live the Lapras. Little tongue twister there. Uh, one of my personal favorites on the team. They're all my favorites, but I mean one of like the, the two or three favorites. Uh, Confuse Ray, Body Slam, Ice Beam, and Surf. Just a phenomenal move set. Gonna be key for victory in the E4. Followed by Dan Kama CPA. Uh, not only the star of this episode as we are trying to get the TM for Thunder, but legit shout out to my guy, Dan. Uh, he got engaged. So congrats to our good friend, Dan. And uh, I hope you have eternal happiness and I hope you do not die in this show. Last but certainly not least, we have Kevin V. Pidgeot, who has been very, uh, very um, selfless in flying us around from city to city. Also has the attacks of Wing and Sand and Quick. So let's jump into this power plant. I just tossed up a Super Repel, and really what we're trying to do is find Thunder, See if there's anything else interesting in here. Uh, we got that Carbos. But we really don't need to battle any trainers. We really don't. Um, this is, of course, Dupes from Nickman. Level 40. Why did I think this was a part of the game that we just skipped and, uh, okay, we have to fight him. Bruh, if you want to hit me with 20 HP moves, you got something else. Oh, I didn't mean to click. Oh, this is going to do like four. This is going to do like four. Yeah. Not a big risk there. I just don't like seeing that word. Self-destruct. Oh, boy. Um, so, I really thought this was a part of the map we missed and we're coming back to and would have... Uh, lower level Pokemon but it turns out I'm gonna need to take this a little bit more seriously we're gonna have to be serial and yes it's going to be annoying having some of these Voltorbs pop up uh, however we're never gonna get the TM if we don't check all of them but with them being 40s um, I am okay using this Cornus Boy strat, um, assuming we Oko, which I'm sure we will. Uh, we remember how much of a scrub Nick Man was for that short time we used him. Yeah, not gonna be a problem there. I am gonna keep eyes on this HP bar though, uh, because we did see them packing the self-destruct. So, man. That must be kind of the, the riddle here, is finding the right spherical object. Uh, us looking for the technical machine thunder. And we only have seven more EQs. Hopefully there aren't seven more uh, Voltorbs. But there very well could. 
could be. And I do want to give a little foreshadowing commentary on something that is probably on many people's minds, and that is the power plant encounters. Of course, like I said, this, any Voltorbs we find are duplicates, um, but with that in mind, this might be it. Rare candy! Okay, we are going to use those before the E4, so the more candy the better. Um, but before I lose my train of thought, I thought that was going to be a Voltorb. Um, Voltorb and Electrode are duplicates in Species Clause, we will not be able to catch them. And if there happens to be a legendary Pokemon in here, um, and I kind of want to just, like, there might be Electabuzz in here, which would be kind of sick too. What I'm trying to say with, with the legendary, and we'll, we'll just run into whatever, um, we can catch it if we don't have a real encounter before that. But, um, I am not someone who is going to use a Legendary in the Nuzlocke. Um, so, like I said, we could catch a potential Legendary, but I, in good conscience, could not use it. And yeah, man, we're seeing 43. Um, like I said, this is Species Clause, so, um... We, we could not catch this one because we already have uh, Nickman, but uh, we're seeing some real levels here, which tells me that if there are any trainers for whatever reason, we should be able to eat this up, right? Still makes me nervous. Okay, that was, that was dropping a little past the comfort zone. Sheesh, but let's heal him back up. At least we're getting good experience. And at full HP, it looks like he could tank even a crit. And that is 80 HP exactly. Um, so what I have rambled on for the last few minutes is, yes, we could... <laughs> Hidden Item Master still got it. Uh, let's see if there's one here. Anyways, um, yeah, we just wouldn't be able to use... <laughs> see, this is, this is the issue, though. Now I think Hidden Items are everywhere. Whoa! Okay, that was quicker than I expected. Who do we want to go into? By eh, Slam. Um, man. Um, JB. Let's just start with. Gosh, didn't know I'd be this rattled. Let's go to JB. Here's the other scary thing, though. We don't want to die to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, something we're not even going to use. Uh, like, obviously we're still going to battle it, but um, let me see his stats again. 69 special. Uh, what is yours? Cornus Boy actually is going to be the safer play, both because of higher special and being able to not be hit by electric moves. So, let's see what this is. Oh my goodness, this is one of the fan favorites. This is one of the fan favorites. So, I'm thinking Drill Peck is the only move that will be able to hit Cornus Boy. So we should be in decent shape. Yes, yeah, so let's see what this is doing. That was not a crit. Theirs was not a crit. And it did... Oh, sick. I really wanted that para. Um, it did 53, which means we are in crit range. And I am not going to risk that for one second. We're going to use all these lemonades if we have to. Don't even care. Can do this all day. I mean, that one did... Yeah, 52. We have 14 Lemonades, and you know what, now let's just do what we do, in the words of Arch Miller, one more Body Slam will put it in a range I'd like to catch it in, I think this is the range I'd like to catch it in, and let's just start tossing. 
Oh yeah, uh, fun fact about Gen 1, this happens all the freaking time. You just like, miss the Pokemon, which is hilarious. Like, we're all about triple jiggles here on this program, and sometimes you don't even have the chance for one. Um, but you know, we have plenty of money, plenty of cash flow. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get it into the ball. Uh, obviously I'm not going to waste the Master Ball on something we can't use. Uh, but Sergio must have been knocking back some of the bubbly because we have not been able to... Oh, is that why? Is it because it's a higher level than anything we have? I don't know. Now that we've gone through seven, I'm really confused. Now I'm really confused because I know I have caught these before. I know I've caught Mewtwo with an Ultra Ball. Um, okay, it's in now. Two, triple jiggle. So all it took was actually aiming correctly because we missed all the freaking time. Uh, but we have caught the Zapdos Electric Pokemon. A legendary bird Pokemon that is said to appear from clouds while dropping enormous lightning bolts. And so what I decided, since we can't actually use these, uh, is I am going to name them after some uh, honorary friends of the program uh, because we pretty much have our squad of six locked and loaded for the E4. So with this in mind, uh, we did, we have Live the Lapras as our most recent friend of the program. I am going to name this after our other financial donor. Oh, we got enough room. We, we have enough room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't even watch it, which is hilarious. But I think we... Oh yeah, we got room. <laughs> we got room. I had to make sure. It's it's harder to eyeball that than you would think. Wait. E N C H. My uh. So Mike French was transferred to Bill's PC. Um. Yeah, I, I just thought that would be the best route. Um. And whoa, little uh. Little unexpected shenanigans there with the secret door. We have not found Thunder yet, which is the objective of this, but uh, I wanted to give a shout out to my boy for giving me a shout out. Um, what we did is, uh, gosh, it was just about a week ago, uh, hit an item perhaps? Um, I hit my three year work anniversary. Let's see if that's it. Oh baby, let's see if that's it. That's Kareem, baby. Is that is that what we think? Okay. Okay. Are you serious? Maybe it's the one on the right side there. Um, I hit my three-year work anniversary, and uh, admittedly was a j just a little thirsty, j just a little bit of thirst, and I put on my Skype status that it was my three-year or whatever it was, two year anniversary, I guess, um, starting my third year. And like earlier in the day, there were like three people from my office, from my office that reached out and I just said, thank you. Thanks for the shout out. And uh, you know, I haven't, I don't think I've seen Mike since September. Um, you know, when he made his financial contribution to this program, of a dollar and uh, he sent me a message um, oh let's see if this is it and uh, I just said thanks man that's and right on cue you know we got good karma in the building and uh, we're not gonna dilly dally like we have with some of these other TMs we're going straight to the source we're, we're making a little rain team here and uh, yeah, I'm thinking T-Shock gotta go. T-Shock gotta go. So one, two, and poof. 
Dan learned Thunder. Let's E-Rope the heck out of here. And my goodness, that was quicker than I expected, like I said. Um, so, based on those levels, let's crack open the town map. Um, I'm a little bit nervous for the E4 still. Did I, I probably deposited it. Um, we'll hit the fly menu with Kevin. Alright, so, if we do... Let me go back... If we go east of Cinnabar, we can hit up the Seafoam Islands. Um, and I'm thinking based on our levels, even getting that experience um, and perhaps one more encounter, it might be worth it. Um, I was really thinking not to do that before, just kind of full speed ahead. Um, and by all means, we might be okay. But we're kind of at a point where we have been in this business for so long, uh, counting the breaks, it's been a year and two months. So I am saying, what's the freaking rush? Let's pick up what we threw at that Zapdos and uh, let's get some of these. Can I afford this? Yeah. Yes. That's a good investment. And let's hit the open sea. Let's hit the open sea. Um, I will move... We'll put JB in the front. He's at 37. So we'll put him in the front. And we will now surf. So by all means, I was planning on... Let's see what this trainer's at. I was planning on just going from... Viridian Gym to the E4. Um, however, I then found out that, uh, yep, we, we're not going to get great experience here, but we'll do what we can. Um, I found out that Thunder was located at the power plant, and after that, I was thinking we'd go right to the E4, but, you know, we might as well see what kind of encounter we can get at the Seafoam Islands, and, uh... You know, if it's as quick as the power plant was, then probably mid-next episode um, we'll be on Victory Road anyways. Um, the other reason I'm not in a huge hurry without getting this experience is because... Spoilers, uh, <laughs> there is one more apple battle before the Victory Road. So, and, and he has a better team than Giovanni or Blaine did. So with our current leveling situation, I think this is the smartest thing to do. We got pretty decent experience. We got some cash flow. And let's just keep battling. What's the rush? Um, it's not terrible experience we're getting. And with that in mind, we're gonna do what I wanted to do before I knew that the power plant had decent Pokemon, which is tell my thoughts about the new Pokemon Sword and Shield versions. Everyone's been waiting for it. I've been kind of teasing it with telling the hours I put into the game. Uh, but I have now completed the game. And let's switch to Dan here. I have now completed the game. And uh, boy, do I have some thoughts. So first of all, I just want to say that uh, I enjoyed the game um, I had the bar kind of middle ground, I guess you could say, um, middle to high, but I didn't have unrealistic expectations, and I enjoyed the game so much, and look at Thunder coming through. Oh, that looks good. Finally got a good move. Crit, too. <laughs> That's so mean. Um, so with Sword, what I liked so much was not only the graphics, not only playing on the big screen, not only the portability too, I, I like having the options, but I liked the take on the gym challenge. Um, rather than just feeling like you're going through an isolated set of gym leaders, it really felt like a whole community experience. And beyond that, um, my one, uh, my biggest criticism 
would be that Team Yell was very, very similar to Team uh, Team Skull from Sun and Moon. I really felt like they were just kind of rehashing that. So I wasn't too happy about that. But overall, I thought the story was good. Um, it really... The champion was someone who you really wanted to beat. And it was cool how you were going through it with the champion's uh, younger brother. So that rivalry felt more real than some of these where like a ginger breaks into Professor Elm's lab and just, you know, is just being a tool. Uh, I didn't see what's coming out, but we can handle bird keepers um, as long as they're not drill pecking our Gyaradoses. And we're just taking them to school. Reparations are being made right now. And we're getting some decent experience. So he's got a Pijoto, which we'll now take out. But um, last couple things on Sword and Shield. Um, the wild area was sweet. Um, it took me some getting used to to have uh, to be able to see the wild Pokemon because I didn't play Let's Go. So that did take some getting used to. Um, but overall, I did like it at those times where you wanted to kind of dodge um, the different Pokemon you could for the most part, and uh, the times you wanted to encounter them, you could. And um, I did get a shiny Machoke at the wild area, so uh, just a little flex there for you. But uh, that was just full odds, it wasn't even shiny hunting per se, that was pretty sweet. And yeah, I am now in the process of completing the Pokedex. Um, I, I got a long way to go. Um, yes, in Sun and Moon, I did complete it with the exception of the uh, Sun exclusives. <coughs> Austin didn't help me with that. So my plan is to um, actually complete this one. And uh, my, my dear friend Cornus Boy who also is working on the shield decks has offered to hook me up uh, so we can help each other out in that department. So we are getting pretty decent experience from these trainers. I think this has been a worthwhile trip. Uh, we're getting that cash flow, which we're gonna be able to use on some full restores, some hypo potions, some full heals. And uh, we're just going to send it with this trainer. But yeah, it kind of put a nice bow on it. Um, I enjoyed Sword. I, I just cranked right through it. Um, I mentioned last time one of my other criticisms was the fact that, uh, you know, your whole team got experience every battle. And I don't know if there was a way to turn that off, but it was like the one fighting got the full experience. And then everyone else on your bench got 50% of that, which was just pretty broken because some of the ones that have a, a quicker level upset, uh, like Boltung for me, um, it just kept going up in level and I didn't even use it that much. Um, so besides that, besides Team Yell, I really liked the game. The graphics were incredible. The story w was really good. Um, I didn't like the design of the legendaries per se before the game, but when you play through and you see the hero's weapons and you connect with the Mirage um, awakening the legendaries, that was really cool to me. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I'm looking forward to completing that dex. And uh, as we arrive here at the Seafoam Islands, uh, we're going to call this one a day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please leave a thumbs up down below if you did enjoy. And we will crank out this island next time as well as probably a rival battle. So big things in the works and we will see you then. Game Slam signing off.